In this video, we will explore how the original function relates to the first derivative and the second derivative. For these problems, we are supposed to sketch a version of the function that satisfies the conditions given. So this says the value of the function at a is greater than zero. In other words, the value of the function at a is positive. So here's a. If the value of the function at a is positive, that means it'll be above the x-axis um, right here. In addition to that, f of x is decreasing at x equals a, which means that the function should be going downhill. So that's one way I could have drawn it. Um, I also could have drawn it with concavity. So I could have drawn it so that it is concave up like this, or I could have drawn it so that it is concave down like this. Either way, it would be decreasing. But I'm just going to go back to a straight line. Problem number two. This part says that f at a is 0. So the value of the function at a is 0, so it's right on the line. And the function is increasing at a, so it should be going uphill. Again, I've drawn this as a straight line, but I could have drawn it uh, concave down, or I could have drawn it concave up. Before we go any further, I need to teach you this little side lesson. This is the most important thing you need to know about the relationship between the original function, the first derivative, and the second derivative. It's a pattern that goes like this. If the second derivative is positive, then the first derivative is increasing and the original function is concave up. Now I'm going to say the opposite of each of those things. If the second derivative is negative, you can probably guess that the first derivative will be decreasing, and the original function will be concave down. So just memorize the order of these three things. From right to left, it goes positive, increasing, concave up. Now imagine that you took all three of these things and somehow shifted them to the left by one space. So I'm going to drop down to the next row, but I'm shifting to the left. So uh, the positive will now be in the column for the first derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plus here. So I'm saying if the first derivative is positive, then the original function is increasing. Reversing each of these, if the first derivative is negative, then the original function is decreasing. I need you to memorize this chart or at least be able to draw it very quickly in the margin of your paper at any time. For problem number three, we are told that f at a is less than zero. That means the value of the function at a is negative, so I'm going to put a dot here below the x-axis to remind us of that. But we're also told that f double prime at a is greater than zero, so the second derivative is positive. Remember, look at the chart. If the second derivative is positive, that means the function is concave up. So we need to make sure that um, we draw a function through here that is concave up, like this. For number four, we are told that f at a is greater than zero. In other words, the value of the function at a is positive, so I'll put a dot here to show that. But also, f prime at a is less than zero, so the first derivative is negative. Look at the chart. Remember, if the first derivative is negative, that means the function itself is decreasing. So we need to draw a function that passes through this point, which is decreasing. Notice that we don't know anything about the concavity, so it would have been acceptable to draw this as concave down or concave up if you wanted to. There are many ways we could draw number five, 
we are told that f at a is greater than zero. So the value of the function at a is positive. Let's go ahead and put a closed circle above the x-axis to show that the value of the function at a is here. Now, f prime at a must be undefined. So there are a couple of ways we could accomplish that. Uh, we could put a discontinuity here, like a jump discontinuity. So let's say from the left, the function is approaching one value, but then from the right, the function is approaching another value. So the uh, derivative here would be undefined because of the discontinuity. So that's one way we could, we could draw it. This will also be uh, non-differentiable if there is, is a cusp right here at this point. So if we make some kind of a sharp corner here, like this, even if it is continuous, it is not differentiable. So uh, the derivative at a would be undefined because of the cusp. Here's a fun one. f at a is equal to f prime at a, which equals 0. This is saying that both the value of the function at a and the slope of the function at a are equal to 0. Let's do these one at a time. Let's start with the fact that the value of the function at a is 0. So I'm going to put a closed circle here on the x-axis to show that the value of the function here is 0. Now, uh, if f prime at a equals 0, the slope is equal to 0 here, which means we should have a horizontal line. So I'm just going to draw a piece of the function here, showing that we have a horizontal line. Uh, it only has to be horizontal at a, so I could have the rest of the function doing other things like this, um, but as long as it's horizontal at a. Just to be thorough, let me show you one more way we could draw this. Um, imagine that this point A is at the top of the curve, or it could have been at the bottom. This would also have a derivative of 0 because the tangent line is horizontal at A. So this would work as well. For number 7, the value of the function at A is less than 0 f at a will be negative, so let's put a closed circle below the axis to show that. f prime at a is equal to 0, so the slope of the function here must be 0. Like I showed you on the last problem, we could either do that by sort of flattening the graph out at a. Uh, this would make it an inflection point where the, the slope right in here is 0. Or we could just make a more simple graph like a parabola. Something like this would do it. Where again, the tangent line would be horizontal here with a slope of 0. So the derivative is equal to 0. For number 8, I want you to think of it this way. f prime basically tells you about the slope while f double prime tells you about the concavity. So the fact that f prime equals 0, the slope is 0, that tells you that we are talking about a horizontal part of the graph. The fact that f double prime is less than 0, it's negative, that tells you that the original function is concave down. And that is the information that's uh, captured on this little chart here. If f double prime is negative, then the original function is concave down. So let's try to draw a function that satisfies both of these. So at a, it needs to be concave down, and I really could draw this anywhere. Uh, you know, I could, I could draw it up here like this, or I could have drawn it down here like this. Uh, that really doesn't matter. So at a, it is definitely concave down, but I've also drawn it so that right at a, I have a horizontal tangent line. Therefore, the uh, first derivative will be 0. 
So something like this would satisfy number eight. Our little chart is really going to help us on problem number nine. F prime is positive and increasing at x equals a. So F prime is positive and increasing. That means that function F itself should be concave up and increasing at x equals a. So let's just make sure that when we draw our curve, um, it will be concave up and increasing as we go through the value of a. I could have drawn this at any height. Any of these would have been fine. We just needed graphs that were increasing, so they're rising from left to right, and also uh, concave up. Number 10 says f of x is positive and f prime of x is increasing at x equals a. Let's start with this part first. f of x is positive at x equals a. So we just need to put a dot somewhere above the x-axis so that the value of the function is positive at x equals a. But we also know that f prime is increasing at x equals a. So look at the chart. If f prime is increasing, that means the function itself is concave up. So I need to make sure that when I draw the function, I draw it as concave up. So I could draw it like this, or I, you know, I could have just drawn it like this, as long as it is concave up. Number 11 is pretty straightforward. f of x is positive and increasing at x equals a. Let's take it one part at a time. If f of x is positive, then that just means it'll be above the axis at x equals a. Now, uh, it must be increasing, which means it should be rising from left to right. I've drawn it as a straight line because we don't know anything about the concavity, but I could have drawn it as a concave up, or I could have drawn it as concave down. Number 12 says that f of x is positive but decreasing at x equals a. Because f of x is positive, I'm going to make sure it is above the x-axis at x equals a. Because it is decreasing, I'm going to make sure that it is going downhill from left to right as we pass through a. Again, I drew it as a straight line, but you could have drawn it as concave up or concave down. Okay, here's another problem where the little chart is really going to come in handy. We are told that f prime is greater than zero and f double prime is also greater than zero. In other words, f prime is positive and f double prime is also positive. But according to the chart, if f double prime is positive, that means the function itself is concave up. If f prime is positive, that means the function itself is increasing. So we need to draw a function that is concave up and increasing. So something like this would fit the bill. Number 14, another chart problem. f prime is negative. So let's see, f prime is negative and f double prime is positive. That tells us that the original function will be concave up and decreasing. So we just need to draw a function f so that it is decreasing but concave up like this. For number 15, we need to draw a function that is continuous at a but is not differentiable at a. What we need is a cusp because you cannot differentiate at a sharp corner. So even though this function is continuous, because there is a sharp corner here, it is not differentiable at A. So that's the picture for 15. For number 16, we need to draw a function that is discontinuous at A, but yet the limit as X approaches A exists. Well, they are describing a hole. 
We can't have a jump discontinuity or anything because then the limit would not exist. But if we're talking about just a hole at A, then the limit will exist because we are approaching the same value from the left and from the right. So the limit exists. But yet, because of the open circle, because of the hole, there is a discontinuity at A. Number 17, f prime is greater than zero for all x, and f double prime is greater than zero for all x. Well, let's consult the chart. If f prime is positive, that means the original function is increasing. If f double prime is positive, that means the original function is concave up. So we need to draw a function that is concave up and increasing everywhere. So something like this would get it done. Number 18, f prime is greater than zero for all x, and f double prime is less than zero for all x. Well, if f prime is positive, that means that the original function is increasing. If f double prime is negative, that means that the original function is concave down. So we need to draw a function that is increasing but concave down. So something like this would work. For number 19, f prime is greater than zero for all x, and f double prime is equal to zero for all x. Well, if f prime is positive, that tells us that the function itself is increasing. So we need an increasing function. What about f double prime being zero? Well, if f double prime is zero, that means it is neither positive nor negative. That means the original function is neither concave up nor concave down. So we just need to draw an increasing function that is flat. Okay, it needs to be linear. Um, so that way it will be neither concave up nor concave down, but it is increasing. Last one, let's do this in parts and make corrections as needed. So f prime is positive. So if f prime is positive, that means that the function is increasing. So it should be rising from left to right, something like this. But let's look at the second part. The function itself is less than zero for all x. So how can I draw the function so that it is always increasing, but yet it never goes above the x-axis? How is that possible? Uh, I'm hoping that you're shouting out at the screen, asymptote, let's do an asymptote. So imagine that the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. So you could have a function that is increasing and it is approaching that asymptote Okay, but the way asymptotes work, it'll keep on increasing, getting closer and closer forever, but it will never reach the asymptote. It will never cross the asymptote. So in this way, the function is uh, always increasing, but at the same time that the value of the function is always negative. It's always less than zero.